A cloud of dust and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker Mixes, and Wheaties, the Breakfast of Champions, presents by special recording. The Lone Ranger. Did you ever go shopping for groceries with your mom and pass something that looked so good you just had to ask her to get it? Mmm, like those Betty Crocker cake mixes with pictures of all the delicious cake flavors on the packages? You look at them and you want mom to bake up every one. For instance, Betty Crocker's white cake mix. Why, that bakes up into the highest, lightest, best-tasting white cake ever. A real lick-the-plate kind of cake. And all Mom has to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. Every Betty Crocker cake mix comes out perfect. And mmm, what flavors? There's yellow cake, chocolate devil's food, honey spice or gingerbread, angel food, marble cake, and Betty Crocker's two newest. Chocolate malt and peanut delight. And of course, there's Betty Crocker's popular brownie mix, too. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great war Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. The Lone Ranger and Toto brought their horses to a halt at the top of a hill and looked into the far distance where Indians rode in hot pursuit of three horsemen. Those men may get away, Toto. The Indians are going to catch the other two. That's right. Now look through the binoculars. Red Wolf and his people, only Indian near here. Those are soldiers. Red Wolf, good Indian. His people, peaceful. They're not peaceful now. Uh The Indians get two men. Yes, one is getting away. He's reaching the hills. Oh, there's going to be trouble. What happened? That soldier must be from Fort Stockton. When he reports that two troopers have been captured by the Indians, it's likely to be war. Red Wolf, not bad Indian. His people make no trouble. Them not want war. Must be plenty good reason to capture soldiers. As far as Colonel Greer at Fort Stockton is concerned, there's nothing to justify an act of that sort by the Indians. You better hurry to the Indian village and persuade your friend Red Wolf to let the soldiers go. Uh, Nico, I'll be waiting for you in camp, Toto. Come on, Jack Lightfoot was a private at Fort Stockton and a full-blooded Indian. He had been raised in the school of a missionary and spoke English as well as any man. When he was summoned by the colonel... He thought it was to be another request for information that would aid in improving the relations with the Indians in the vicinity. Lightfoot reporting, sir. Who's the door, Mr. Hello, Sergeant Martin? Yes, Colonel Greer. The Indians don't think much of me, Colonel Greer, or my friends either. Personal prejudice doesn't enter into the situation. Lightfoot, you know the country beyond Boulder Pass? Yes, sir. You know every gap and gully, every arroyo, every hiding place? Yes, sir. It's like he knows the palm of his own hand. Do you know a place near the Indian village where a detachment of men could move without being seen by the Indians? Well, speak up. Do you? Yes, sir. But, Colonel, if a scouting party is to spy on Red Wolf's people... Spy on him, he says. 
murder and pull cat. What did you call Red Wolf's people? Those Redskins attacked me and my two friends when we were hunting game. They attacked? Yeah, they sure did. They captured Hank and Squint. I just got away by the skin of my teeth. But, Colonel, Red Wolf was promised that there would be no hunting on his land. I didn't say we were on his land. Even if the hunters were in the valley that was set aside for the Indians, Red Wolf had no excuse to capture the hunters. He must be taught not to take the law into his own hands. I uh, want that Indian brought here to question him. Brought here, sir? Yes. Sir, if he's made to come here, his pride... I'm not interested in the pride of an Indian chief. I propose to demand his immediate surrender and be prepared to back my demand. If those savages... Red think, Wolf is no savage. That will do, Lightfoot. You would lead the way. I shall follow with the troopers and have them hidden within firing distance of the Indian village. You are to call on Red Wolf and demand the immediate release of his prisoners and his immediate surrender. His surrender? I'll give him a talking to that he'll never forget. And if he refuses to meet your demands, we'll ride in. That's the talk, Colonel. We'll ride in and rescue my friends. If they haven't already been burned at the stake. You needn't worry about that. You'd be ready in 30 minutes. But, but sir, you're a soldier, Lightfoot. And that's an order. Tahoe had used all his powers of persuasion without convincing Chief Red Wolf that it would be wise to release the captured soldiers. The two stood near the council ring when they saw Jack Lightfoot, the Indian, approaching... That soldier. Him, good friend. Oh, oh, oh. Nakuma. Nakuma. Kuma. You come visit. I did not come to visit. Here, good friend. This tunnel. How? Oh. Our tunnel. Kuma. Member army. White name Lightfoot. Oh. Red Wolf. Word has reached the coast that you've made prisoners of two men. Is that true? Huh? That's true. But why? Bad men kill Indians. Steal plenty horse. Have you proof of that? Proof not good for army leader. Me try get better proof. You should have reported those men to the colonel. Many time horse lost. Many time me make report. Nothing done. This time we catch horse thief, catch murderer. Footprints match mark on trail. You, you have made a great mistake, Red Wolf. Why you not tell what news you bring? Red Wolf, the soldiers are nearby. I have come to take you to them. They're in a gully under hanging rock. Soldier won't talk to Red Wolf. Soldier come here. I... The colonel insists that you go to him and take with you the prisoner. Not go me not go. If you don't, there may be war. Think it over, Chief Red Wolf. You have until sunset to decide. Tano, where you go? Me go, Chief Friend. Get him up, Tano. Red Wolf, if the soldiers come here, they will... Soldier won't speak to Red Wolf. Soldier come here. That's only way. That means they will come with rifles ready. <laughs> Toto was with Red Wolf when the Indian trooper Jack Lightfoot brought the ultimatum from Colonel Greer. Toto left the Indian village and hurried to the camp of his masked friend, the Lone Ranger. He told what had happened. Oh, it's too bad the Colonel has taken that stand. Now Red Wolf in plenty trouble. Yes. He'll lose faith if he obeys the colonel's orders. If he doesn't, there'll be a fight. Many horses stolen from Red Wolf. Yes, I know, Toto. He's complained to the army, but nothing's been done. Where is Colonel Greer waiting with the troopers? In gully near a place called Hanging Rock. Oh, I know the place. How much time have we? The colonel say Red Wolf surrendered by sundown. Sundown? Where are the prisoners held? In Wigwam, at the edge of the village. Horses tied nearby. Can I reach that wigwam without being seen by Indians or troopers? Ah, me no way through woods and tall grass. 
I could get into it from the rear by cutting a slit. Isn't that right? You, you got the plan? Yes. I'm going to try something, Toto. I'll need your help and the help of Red Wolf. You show me how to reach that wigwam. Then go into the village and talk to Red Wolf. And we talked before. Red Wolf not like what Toto says. I think he'll listen to you this time. You'll tell him about me and borrow a couple of horses. Then tell him that I'm taking his prison. Inside the wigwam, Hank and Squint were increasingly worried. Through a narrow slit in the entrance, they had seen the Indian trooper ride in, confer with Red Wolf, and ride away. For some time after that, they discussed the incident. I can't figure it out, Squint. I thought you were a trooper to be here by this time. So did I. Hey, Squint, uh, someone's in back of this wigwam. Yeah, here. Hey, Hank, look. There's a blade of a knife sticking through. Maybe we're being rescued. Just way slower than that. The guards in the other front. If only our hands were free. Still, look, Hank. He's mad. I'll be with you as soon as I cut the hole of the door. Just a minute. You going to get us out of here? There we are. Move over so I can cut your rope. Yeah. We won't protect this, mister. Who sent you? How'd you know we were here? There. They're both free. The horses are saddled and waiting. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope the steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger rescued Hank and Squint from the Indian camp by cutting a hole in the back of their wigwam. Then he led the two prisoners through the underbrush to a place where Silver was standing with two horses. There are your horses. Maybe we owe you plenty for this. How come you did it? Maybe I could use some of Red Wolf's horses myself. Oh, so that's what it helped Who told you about them? I have ways of learning about men like you. Well, are you cutting me in on your deal? I reckon you've earned it. Then we better get going before the Indians miss you. Take me to the stolen horses. I want to look them over. All right, mister. We'll play it your way. Go ahead. I'll follow. Wind and Hank led the way to a small hidden valley where the Lone Ranger saw a surprisingly large number of Indian ponies. Oh, 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 oh. They were strong, wiry animals of exceptional endurance. Squint pointed to them proudly. Those critters will fetch a good price when we get them across the line where we can sell them. You better wait until sunset before you start. Darkness will come soon after that. There'll be less likelihood of being seen by scouting parties. I have some good binoculars. I'll climb to the top of that hill. From there, I think I can see the Indian village. Oh, see what's going on, huh? Possibly learn that the Indians are riding out in search of you. Well, I'll not be long. What do you make of that last man, eh? Hey? He's got a free of the Indians. Yeah, but I don't want to cut him in when we sell horses. He's got the only guns. What can we do? Watch for the chance to jump him. Get his guns and finish him off. Yeah. Yeah, I hate that shit. We'll watch for the chance. <laughs> found the place at the hill 
hilltop from which he could see the Indian village in the west. He drew a small mirror from his pocket and reflected the rays of the sun in a beam of light. In Red Wolf's village, Toto had been watching for the signal. When he saw the flashing mirror on the hill a mile away, he hurried to the side of Red Wolf. Now, you take all braves right out of village. Make wide circles the far side of the hill where lights flash. What happened then? Maybe find stolen horse. Then see what masked friend do. After finishing with the signals, the Lone Ranger watched the Indian village through binoculars. The signs of activity told him that Red Wolf was acting on Toto's instructions according to the plan. At length, he rejoined Squint and Hank in the valley. Well, what did you see? The Indians are riding out of their village. Looking for us? Well, probably. Maybe they won't find us here. We'll tie the horses in three strings and wait until dark. Unless the Indians come this way. In that case, you'll have to run from them. In the gully close to Red Wolf's village, the soldiers were becoming increasingly impatient. The Indian trooper, Jack Lightfoot, and Mike Martin, the friend of the horse thieves, stood near the colonel. Yeah, here comes Andy. Looks like he has something to report. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Colonel Greer. What is it? I've been up here and they're watching the village. Looks to me like the Indians are fixing to go on the warpath. What's going on? They're riding out with bows and arrows. Are they ready this way? No, sir. It looks like they're heading north. Well, maybe they're running away. They're not. You face cut a fight. They'll find us ready. Well, maybe you should go after them, sir. Colonel, you promised to wait until sundown. Well, wait. But at sundown, we start after it. Oh. In the valley, the Lone Ranger cut three pieces of rope and tied the stolen horses in three strings. Then he and the two crooks waited. The crooks were waiting for darkness, the masked man for something else. Presently, he saw what he was waiting for. Red Wolf and his Indians approaching from the east. Look, Indians. Red Wolf is in the lead. But their village is in the other direction. They must have circled the mountain. They'll spot us in a minute or two. We gotta clear out. We can't go east. We run smack into them. We gotta go the other way. That means riding toward the village. I know a route through deep arroyos. We can go close to their village, then turn south past Hanging Rock. We'll have to travel fast. Think we can lead the horses and keep ahead of the Indians? Well, we can try. Come on. They've seen us. Tie those lead ropes to your saddles. The Indian ponies will keep up with us. I'm all fast. Me too. Move to her. Oh, Lone Ranger rode between Squint and Hank, and each of the three horsemen led a string of the stolen Indian ponies. The masked man showed the way to an arroyo that meandered back and forth. It was approximately 20 feet wide and had steep walls on both sides. The Indians followed at a distance, keeping the three men and the stolen horses in sight, but making no effort to cut down the lead. Toto rode at the side of Red Wolf, the chief. Get up, get up. Jack Lightfoot had been watching the sun, and Colonel Greer had been looking frequently at his watch. Finally, he put the instrument into his pocket and turned to the troopers. All right, men, prepare them out. Colonel Greer. Yes, what is it, Lightfoot? I hear hoofbeats, many of them. I don't hear anything. You will in a minute. They're coming this way. Yes, I hear them. Maybe Red Wolf is coming here. I can't determine the direction of those roots. They seem to be down that way, sir, in this arroyo. Well, I don't see very far. I stand a hundred yards away. I can hear them clearly now. You mean mount? Uh, are you ready for action? The lone ranger rode between Squint and Hank, ahead of the stolen horses that raced along in three springs. The masked man knew soldiers were waiting just around the bend and wondered how the horse thieves would act when they saw that they were trapped. He didn't have long to wait to find out. As soon as the three rounded the bend, Squint cried out. Hey, look, Hank, the troopers, stop here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we're caught with stolen horses. It's a trap and you let us into it. We'll fix you. Squint and Hank sized up the situation instantly and attacked the Lone Ranger from both sides. 
While Hank snatched the gun from the masked man's holster and leaped to the ground, Squint pulled the Lone Ranger to the ground on his side of the big white shadow. I got a gun, Squint. Let me at him. Let me get a clear crack at him. I'll fix him. I'll get a hold of his arms. You'll get his other guns. Hang on. Bring him this way. No, you don't. Put it up on your feet. I'll kill this masked zombie. Give me that gun. Get up. Squint, you heard what the colonel said. All right. You hang, Squint. What are you doing with these Indian horses? We thought you were prisoners of the Indians. Uh, Colonel Greer, that man. He stole the horses. He's the horse thief. We captured him. What do you have to say? Colonel Greer, these men stole the Indian horses. They were captured by Red Wolf. Red Wolf and his followers closed in and dismounted. The Indian chief and Toto pushed past the three lines of stolen horses to join the small group at the side of the arroyo. Red Wolf told his story. Then the masked man said, Colonel Greer, Red Wolf has tried to convince you on previous occasions that his horses were being stolen, but no action was taken. He had no proof. Me got proof now. Me show you tracks of soldiers in Indian territory. Show you tracks near three... You will investigate. You will find that the hoof marks and boot prints Red Wolf speaks about will match the boots of three of your soldiers. And the horses they ride. Oh, now wait, hold Be on. Quiet. Martin, you told me the Indians captured Hank and Squint while you were hunting. Yeah, but I... You could... told me you were not hunting on the land. That's reserved for the Indians. The evidence will prove otherwise, sir. It will prove that your troopers were on Indian land. Three Indians shot by white man's rifles. If that is true, Red Wolf, you'll see justice done. The bullets that kill those Indians will be ample proof. The Indians have no rifles that use bullets like the army. Give that mask, man, his gun. Yes, sir. Arrest these two and Martin as well. Now, wait, hold on, Colonel. I... Enough, Martin. You'll have a chance to talk when you go on trial. And if the evidence is what I think, talking will do you no good. Bye, Colonel. I'll do me again. Goodbye, and thank you for what you've done. Now, listen, Colonel. You can't arrest us. You can't take the word of that, that mask, man. Again. You can investigate. Your trial will be based on evidence. But I tell you, the mask man is the horse thing. Oh, shit. I know who that last man is. He's the Lone Ranger. Special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.